Hello and welcome to the Speaking Archaeologically lecture on what is experimental archaeology. Experimental archaeology, as the name suggests, is a branch of archaeology that concentrates on testing the theoretical knowledge we have about past cultures and lifestyle in a technical and practical way. To put it simply, it's a practical way of testing whatever we know about past technologies. For example, uh, when it comes to sculpture making, especially metallic sculptures, we do talk about a technique called seer perdu or the lost wax technique of mold. And uh, just to testify whether seer perdu would, would have yielded what we have before us in the museum, we would probably try to make a wax mold on our own and try and see whether that works or not. Um, interestingly, the whole concept of experimental archaeology isn't recent, contrary to the popular belief. Rather, the first experiment to test an archaic technology was done in the 17th century when pottery was smoked and fired to prove that urns yielding bones were not natural, they were actually man-made and they were fired using a special firing technique. A lot of people believed, because of the way an urn is structured, that the urns were a natural phenomenon, that the soil solidified around the bones, especially the partially cremated ones, and that's why it looked like a vessel. But just to prove that theory wrong, a lot of people did the first experiment to show that no, it was a deliberate thing to make an urn, and it was a specific kind of firing technique that yielded black pots. In the 20th century, the field was further extended to taphonomic experiments like testing effects of nature and natural withering on organic material like bones, animal hides, etc. So uh, the whole field was just diversified and extended beyond archaeology into anthropology as well and to some extent even to the paleontology department. Today, experimental archaeology includes a wide array of areas ranging from testing techniques and tool use among early hominins to reconstruction of comparatively more recent times such as Romans, Egyptians and Mesopotamians. So broadly, experimental archaeology can be defined as a branch of archaeology that empirically verifies the practicality of ancient technologies and includes study of various processes such as house building, textile weaving, tool and weapon making, and even reconstruction of ancient modes of transport such as Bronze Age boats, carts, etc. etc. Interestingly, the widely researched branch of ethnoarchaeology is also a cousin of experimental archaeology. In ethnoarchaeology, we closely observe the traditional or regional production techniques and try to trace the origin of the whole process, as well as the influences of certain kinds of colonialization or political changes that would have occurred, which resulted into an object being worn or formed or produced in a certain way. If we go a step further and start doing that ourselves to test the practicality of what we are doing, say textile weaving in the Himachali way, if we actually pick up one of the tools and start weaving cotton the way the Himachali people do, that would be experimental archaeology. So, having discussed what experimental archaeology is, and a rough definition for it as well as to some extent the scope of experimental archaeology. Let us now talk about the types of experiments that form the mainstay of experimental archaeology. I'm going to take into account uh, the five major classes of experiments as defined by the eminent uh, experimental archaeologist Peter J. Reynolds who was also a pioneer in the field quite literally. He defines five different classes of experiments and the first among them is called construct. In construct, it's literally constructing a hypothetical design for a structure based upon the archaeological evidence before you. It is a hypothesis that literally stands or falls. A certain archaeological evidence or a certain assumption would lead us to believe that a Neolithic roundhouse would have looked a certain way or would have been constructed using certain materials. But when we actually pick up those very materials and employ them to constructing a house, we find the impracticality of it glaring at us 
right in our face so certain things cannot be that tall because the people back then would not have been that tall or certain things cannot be that short because it would be impossible to enter the structure otherwise so it's quite literally clear when you're trying to build a structure or when you're trying to construct a structure whether that would have been practically possible or not the second kind of experiment is the processes and functions experiments and that's investigating into how things were achieved in the past this includes investigation into what tools were for or how they were used or how technological processes were achieved so for instance picking up a hand axe and trying to um, probably butcher animal hide with it would be an example of processes and functions experiments another would be trying to nap a stone tool um, the third kind of experiment would be simulation and uh, Reynolds defines it as experimental investigation into formation processes of archaeological record and post depositional taphonomy. So that would literally mean picking up a bronze vessel, exposing it to the outside environment and to the soil and the heat and the dust to see whether it yields the same amount of wear and tear that an object in the museum, a similar object in the museum, or picking up a bone and subjecting it to similar tortures that bone would have gone through had it been buried under the soil for a certain number of years. Um, the fourth kind of experiment is eventuality trial, which is usually combining all the three categories above. Uh, eventuality trial is large scale, and it's often long duration experiment that can investigate complex systems such as agriculture and chart variation caused by unexpected or rare eventualities like extreme weather. The fifth kind of experiment is technological innovation where archaeological techniques themselves are trialed in realistic scenarios. A good example would be testing a geophysical equipment over a simulated buried archaeological site. Now that we've discussed the basics and the types of experiments in experimental archaeology, I think it's relevant to talk about what experimental archaeology is not. Yes, you heard me right. Experimental archaeology does not mean turning primitive for the sake of deriving practical information about a historical period, quite simply because we do realize that complete knowledge is never possible in case of archaeology. Yes, pessimistic as it may sound, we can never ever correctly determine what the society would have exactly been like in the past. We can only hazard a guess based on what we have before us, but we can never really answer all the whys. So while experimental archaeology would require a fair amount of dedication towards what you're doing, it would be ridiculous to blur the lines between what is necessary and what is not. For instance, and a lot of people will disagree with me on that, reenactment is absolutely useless for archaeological purposes. It may be fun to pretend to belong to a particular era, say of the Vikings or the Mughals or the Regency period, but dressing up and speaking like them gives us absolutely no scientific knowledge about the past whatsoever, except perhaps how uncomfortable dressing up was in certain eras or how difficult fighting wars were with really heavy swords. Um, of course, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you disagree with this theory, most archaeologists do in fact. While some insist on the so-called living experiments to gain a fuller insight into the past societies, others firmly believe that experimental archaeology must be as scientific as possible and limited only to a carefully controlled and monitored way of looking at techniques of a particular period with the aim of testing a certain hypothesis before finally con including them as definite facts into history. In terms of further reading, I would recommend Experimental Archaeology, written by J.M. Coles, and also Archaeology by Experiment, written by the same author. For those who are looking for something rather short, or perhaps a little brief on the topic, A. Outram's article, Introduction to Experimental Archaeology, which was published in World Archaeology, is an excellent source, and it's available online, free, for you to read.